Welcome to Wild Lecture Online. To get a better understanding of what we mean by path independence and trying to figure out what it is that influences path dependence or path independence, we're going to take the same vector field for the function f. We're still going to do the same evaluation, but now the path is going to be from 0, 0 to 2, 4. And so this is point A, this is point B. We're going to go from A to B, taking the two different paths, because maybe it was something about the simplicity of going from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Let's see if this is still working when we take a different, two different paths to a different point 2, 4 instead of the point 1, 1. So we're going to evaluate this again to see if this function evaluated over two different paths still shows that it's path independent. All right, so we're doing some more exploration. So for the path one, we're going to evaluate this. So this is equal to the integral. And we're going to evaluate the function. Now notice when we use the parametric equations with the variable t, x is going to be 2t for t going from 0 to 1. And therefore y, which is equal to 2x in this case, y will be 4t dx will be 2 dt and dy will be 4 dt. So let's plug that into the integral. So we have y, which is going to be 4t. So we have 4t in the i direction plus x is going to be 2t in the j direction. And we're going to do the dot product with dr. And r is going to be 2ti plus, oh, here, 2ti plus 4tj, but the differential of r is going to be dx and dy times i and j, so we're going to end up with 2 in the i direction plus 4 in the j direction times dt, because we can factor out a dt. When we multiply these together, notice that's going to be from 0 to 1. No, not from 0 to, yeah, from 0 to 1, because those are the limits for t. And so this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. Multiply the i's together, we get 8t. Plus, when we multiply the j's together, we get 8t times dt, which is equal to 16 times the integral of t dt from 0 to 1, which is equal to 16t squared divided by 2 from 0 to 1. When we plug in the lower limit, 0, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get 16 divided by 2, which is equal to 8. So when we travel along the path from 0, 0 to 2, 4, along path number 1, the integral, the line integral, is evaluated at A. Notice that it's a scalar quantity, because whenever we have a dot product, we end up with a scalar quantity. Let's do path 2 now and see if we get 8 again. So this is equal to the integral, so we're going to evaluate this, f dot dr, and so from 0 to 1. And in this case, since we use the quadratic equation, x is going to be 2t and y is going to be 4t squared. Because when t is equal to 1, x is going to be equal to 2. And when t is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to 4, which puts it at this point right there. So dx is going to be 2dt, dy is 8t dt. Let's plug that in now. And so y is going to be, let's see, 4t squared. 4t squared in the i direction plus x is going to be 2t in the j direction. Dot product with dr. And dr is going to be 2dt, so 2 in the i direction plus 8t in the j direction times dt. When we multiply the i's and the j's together, we get 8t squared plus 2 times 6, that's 2 times 8 is 16t squared times dt, which is going to be equal to 24 times integral from 0 to 1, t squared dt, which is going to be 24 t cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. And when plugging the lower limit, we get 0. Upper limit, we get 1 times 24 divided by 3, which is 8. And again, notice that we end up with the very same result, irregardless what path we took to go from 0, 0 to 2, 4. So it looks like path independence or path dependence seems to depend on the vector field through which we travel. Something about it causes this to be 
path independent when we evaluate the line integral through the vector field with a path, no matter which path we take from one point to another point. We get the same result each time. So something about that vector field which makes it path independent when we, do, when we evaluate that line integral. So we're getting on track to understand what we mean by that. So let's see what it is about that vector field. Let's explore some more.